Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please subscribe and keep watching for more details videos. We've all been in a situation where we feel a sneeze coming, and it's not a great time to sneeze. How to stop a sneeze in its tracks? Ryan's sister, Meredith Seacrest Leach, they wrote a children's book, The Make Believers, is out tomorrow. Ryan's roses, her husband was seeing someone else while they were separated, but now it seems they're getting back together. But is that other woman out of the picture? See omnistudio.com slash listener for privacy information. Once upon a time, in a world where imagination and reality intersected, there existed a small town called Shoal. It wasn't the kind of place you'd find on an ordinary map, for Shoal was hidden away, nestled in a realm known only to those who dared to dream beyond the ordinary. This was a place where ideas took form, where creativity flowed freely, and where the line between what was real and what was possible blurred beautifully. But Shoal wasn't a place you simply stumbled upon. To find it, one had to believe in the unbelievable, see the unseen, and embrace the impossible. That's where the make-believers came in. A unique group of individuals, the make-believers had a rare gift, the power to bring stories, art, and ideas to life. Each of them was endowed with a different talent, which they used to craft a world that could amaze, inspire, and sometimes even frighten those who entered it. The leader of the make-believers was a woman named Ilara. She had the ability to shape dreams and give them form. Her creations could enchant you, making you lose track of time and space, swept away in a sea of vibrant colors and hypnotic rhythms. Alongside Ilara was Finn, a young artist whose brush could paint images that leaped off the canvas and danced around the room. And then there was Ren, a poet whose words could weave spells, making the ordinary extraordinary and turning whispers into symphonies. The make-believers didn't work in isolation. Shoal was a living, breathing entity. The town itself had a personality, a mischievous, ever-changing character that responded to the moods and whims of its residents. The streets twisted and turned as if guided by invisible hands. Buildings rearranged themselves in the blink of an eye, and trees would whisper secrets to those brave enough to listen. Some visitors found it unsettling, but the make-believers thrived on Shoal's unpredictability. They saw it not as chaos, but as a canvas waiting to be filled. One day, an invitation was sent out to people in the outside world. A glowing letter appeared on doorsteps, in mailboxes, and even fluttered down from the sky like a snowflake. The letter read, Dear Dreamer, you are invited to the full show, a celebration of creativity, wonder, and the magic of imagination. Come and see what lies beyond the veil of the ordinary. Step into a place where dreams take shape and where your own imagination can run wild. But beware, nothing here is quite as it seems. Yours in wonder, the make-believers. The full show was to be an event like no other, a spectacle designed to showcase the limitless potential of human creativity. The entire town would become a stage, and every corner, street, and alley would be transformed into a space where stories unfolded and fantasies came to life. It was a chance for the make-believers to share the magic of Shoal with the world, to remind people of the power of imagination. As word of the full Shoal spread, a wave of excitement swept through the creative community. Writers, artists, musicians, and performers of all kinds flocked to Shoal, eager to participate and see what the make-believers had in store. Among them was a skeptical journalist named Max. He had heard the tales of Shoal and the make-believers but he wasn't one to put stock in fantastical stories. Max believed in facts and logic, not magic and whimsy. His editor had sent him to cover the event, hoping to get a unique perspective from someone who wasn't already swept up in the enchantment of it all. When Max arrived in Shoal, he found himself immediately disoriented. The train station, he stepped off from vanished behind him, replaced by a bustling square filled with towering sculptures, that seemed to shimmer and shift as he moved. A giant clock tower stood in the center, its hands spinning wildly, ticking away to a rhythm only it could hear. And yet, despite the surreal nature of his surroundings, there was something welcoming about the place, something that made Max want to explore. 
It wasn't long before he encountered Elara, Finn, and Ren. Elara greeted him with a knowing smile. You must be Max, the non-believer, she said teasingly. I'm not a non-believer, Max replied. I just prefer reality to whatever this is. Elara's smile widened. Reality is only as real as you make it. Why don't you join us? We'll give you the full experience of Shoal. By the end of it, you might see things differently. With that, Max found himself swept into a whirlwind of creativity. Elara led him to a grand theater where shadows on the walls sprang to life, acting out scenes of love, loss, and redemption. He watched as Finn created a mural that shifted and changed, telling an entire story in the span of a few brushstrokes. And he listened as Ren spoke words that made the air itself shimmer, the meaning of each line resonating deep within him. Despite himself, Max began to feel something stir inside, a sense of wonder and excitement he hadn't felt since he was a child. There was a magic to show, a magic that defied explanation, but was undeniably real. It was in the way the buildings hummed with energy, the way the sky seemed to ripple with unseen currents, and the way every person he met had a story that was somehow connected to his own. As the days passed, Max's skepticism began to melt away. He started to see the world through the eyes of the make-believers, understanding that the full show wasn't just about putting on a show. It was about unlocking the potential within every person who experienced it. It was about breaking down the barriers between what was real and what was possible, showing people that imagination was the most powerful tool they possessed. On the final night of the full show, Elara gathered everyone in the town square. The clock tower, which had been ticking away relentlessly, finally stopped. Silence fell over the crowd as Elara stepped forward. Tonight, she announced, we open the door between Shoal and the rest of the world. What you've experienced here isn't meant to stay confined within these borders. It's meant to inspire, to spark change, to remind you that there is magic within each of you. You don't need a place like Shoal to create wonders. All you need is the courage to believe in your own dreams. As she spoke, the clock tower began to glow, its light spreading outward, enveloping the town and everyone in it. Max felt a warmth blossom in his chest, a feeling of hope and possibility that seemed to fill every corner of his being. For the first time in a long time, he felt truly alive. And then, just like that, it was over. The light faded, and the town of Shoal began to dissolve. The buildings, the streets, and even the people around him shimmered and then vanished like a mirage. Max found himself standing alone in an empty